Good evening, families, and welcome to our family and community update. My name is David Hansen, and I have the blessing and good fortune of serving as the superintendent for the Riverside Unified School District. Just by way of announcements, we are at the same time broadcasting this in Spanish um, on our YouTube channel and would like to extend a special welcome and a thank you to all of our Spanish speaking families that are joining us. At this time, I'd like to ask Assistant Superintendent Sergio San Martin to provide uh, this announcement in Spanish, please. Thank you, Dr. Hansen. Muy buenas tardes y bienvenidos. Tenemos una transmisión en vivo por separado para nuestra comunidad de habla hispana. Para unirse y escuchar, siga el enlace en la parte de abajo de la pantalla. Muchas gracias. Back to you, Dr. Hansen. Thank you, Mr. San Martin. Uh, folks, we certainly recognize uh, the challenging time and circumstances that we find ourselves in with the pandemic that currently faces us, not just not in this region, but worldwide. And we have great appreciation to our students and our families for your patience and for the resilience. You know, for the last oh, two or three weeks, I have visited dozens and dozens of classrooms virtually. And I can't even begin to imagine how hard it is to teach and learn in this virtual environment we find ourselves in. Yet our teachers and students are making it look easy. Our teachers are miracle workers. And I'm absolutely grateful to the hard work of all of our teachers who are making this happen and certainly all of our families and students who are also making this happen. So thank you very, very much. We appreciate all of the work of all of our staff members and families. And again, as I mentioned, specifically the patients that you're showing us. Uh, this report is going to give an update to you about a return to school and a presentation we shared with our board just last evening. But before we get into the details, we do have our board president with us, Mrs. Kathy Alavi, and I'd like to turn some time over to Kathy to provide some thoughts and a, and a greeting. Mrs. Alavi. Good evening and welcome to another Riverside Unified Community Update. Last night at our board meeting, we heard an update about our plan to reopen schools when safe to do so. Today, you are going to hear about those plans as well. The choices we have to make in a school district have been called mind numbing. There are certainly no perfect answers, but the board is taking steps deliberately and thoughtfully. We believe children learn best in a school environment and will only move forward when all is in place with preventions and protocols. On October 20th at 5 o'clock p.m. at our next school board meeting, we will be making decisions about the reopening. So please listen in if you can. We will be making decisions about timelines and resuming sports and marching band if all goes well. Information about this meeting can be found at our website below. At that time, we will discuss the latest health information and discuss the direction that we should move into. Look for our new safety guide, which is coming your way and which outlines important information about how we are preparing for your students to return to campus. Now I would like to introduce you to our Chief Academic Officer, Renee Hill, who will explain more about our plans. Thank you, Mrs. Allaby. And hello, everyone. My name is Renee Hill. I'm the Chief Academic Officer here in Riverside Unified. As both Dr. Hansen and Mrs. Allaby mentioned, we are tracking our community health conditions here in Riverside County. At the moment, we are in the red or substantial tier. And at that tier, school is able to open. Right now, we're planning to open on November 9th for elementary schools and November 30th for middle and high schools. We will continue to watch our tier levels because as this week, some of our criteria put us into the purple or widespread level. If we were to move as a county to that purple level and stay there for a sustained period of time, it could delay our opening of school. We'll continue to monitor this situation and have an update at that October 20th board meeting that Mrs. Allaby spoke about. Now we'll talk to you about those plans for return to school. And I'd like to invite Dr. Lewis to give us the details. Thank you, Ms. Hill. 
As we all heard Mrs. Allaby speak of earlier, this is a preview to a action item that will come before the board on the 20th later this month. So our plans pending approval is to return on November 9th in phase two. Phase two will be one day per week and we will begin with our elementary school students. Again, if we progress along our plan, we will transition to phase three, which will be two days per week for students returning to school in person, beginning on November 30th. For both elementary, we will also at that time bring back our middle school and high school students. So some considerations for our families. Number one on the left, you will notice the reiteration of the dates, planning accordingly. And in the middle are in-person group assignments. So remember when our in-person students do return back to school, they will be doing so in two different groups, group A and group B. For our elementary school families, you will receive notification of the week of October 26th, again, pending board approval. But on October 26th, your elementary schools will be in contact with your students' group assignment. So for example, if you are assigned to group A in phase two, you will attend school on Tuesdays. If you are assigned to group B, you will attend school on Thursday. And there will be a much more detailed information provided at the October 20th meeting. As well as our assignments to groups were based on students' address, program choice, and classroom balance. Lastly, as a reminder, on November 5th and 6th, those are scheduled as non-student days uh, for our elementary school students, so they don't have to attend school. At that time, we thank our teachers who will be eagerly setting up their classrooms on the 5th and 6th, getting ready for students to return. If for some reason a parent conference is needed for a student who is at risk of retention, your teacher will be in contact. Regarding special education, their return plan is slightly different. Again, this is an overview. So for mild to moderate special day students, phase two will begin for elementary school on November 9th. And you will notice that there is a schedule listed as to be determined. That's because we have a working group at that time made up of families, teachers and administrators working on that plan for elementary students. On phase three, starting on November 30th for mild to moderate special day students, elementary again will be part of that working group plan. Middle school and high school students will attend the same as the general education schedule. Now that is different from moderate to severe students in special day classes beginning with phase two on November 9th. Starting on November 9th, elementary students will attend four days per week at half days for moderate to severe special day students. Our middle and high school students in that same moderate to severe special day class program will be attending two days per week, Mondays and Tuesdays on full days. And then as we transition to phase three, that time will increase. So our moderate to severe students in elementary school will attend four days per week full days starting November 30th, as well as our middle and high school students will also be attending four full days per week in that moderate to severe special day program. Our next steps moving forward will be one, this community update, and then we will provide another one following the October 20th board meeting. We will also have our return planning guide that will be distributed to families the week of October 12th which will have details of safety precautions, schedules, and other pertinent information. As well, we have already released our safety video, and we have two other, three other video series that will be coming your way following the board meeting. We will have a day in the life of a student series for both elementary, middle, and high school to give you a firsthand look of what your student experience will be, look, be looking like when we return to school. And our last announcement is we are very excited to offer all of our students in all of our programs, fourth through 12th grade, a partnership that we have for a 24 seven tutoring service delivered by the company by the name of Paper. These tutoring services will be delivered in both English and in Spanish and are delivered via a chat based feature uh, via your students electronic device. They will be able to log in, be assigned to tutors, and a tutor will then have a whiteboard where they'll be able to support your student through whatever academic need that they have. That does include any writing supports. So for students who are writing paragraphs or papers, they're able to get support and feedback on their writing assignments. Teachers will also be able to monitor students' usage and also provide suggestions if students are having difficulty in the classroom. All of the tutors have passed a background check and we are very excited to offer this and thank our board for approving our contract last night at our board meeting. This will begin 
uh, for all of our students on October 19th. More information to follow at the October 20th board meeting as our rollout will have taken place. And tonight we will conclude our meeting with a video clip of Dr. Kaiser presenting to the City Board of Supervisors. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you, Dr. Lewis, and thank you, Ms. Hill, and thank you, Mrs. Alavi. We appreciate you and your support. And as Dr. Lewis just mentioned, just Tuesday, we learned from our public health official, Dr. Cameron Kaiser, as he was reporting to the Riverside County Board of Supervisors, and that's the video that Dr. Lewis mentioned. It's only about three minutes. And we learned that, as uh, Ms. Hill mentioned, at our most recent the most recent county COVID-19 numbers, they've increased a bit. And if we remain high uh, this next week or increase this next week as a county, we may be placed back on the state watch list or that top tier as purple. And that could possibly slow down our in-person return to school. It really depends though how long we stay in the purple and we won't know that for really a few weeks. So as of what you saw tonight, we're moving forward to have plans to have our elementary come back on November the 9th and all secondary on November the 30th. So stay on right now and we're gonna show this clip of Dr. Kaiser. It's just three minutes as he reports to the County Board of Supervisors. Now, as also Mrs. Alvey mentioned, we'll do another update for you on October the 22nd and please tune in to our October the 20th board study session as we go more deeply into the specifics here for RUSD. Thanks for joining us this evening. This uh, concludes this portion of our community update. Good morning, Chairman, Supervisors. Mr. Johnson is North, Dr. Cameron Kaiser, Public Health Officer. As COVID-19 will be a lengthy topic of discussion today, I will keep my remarks brief. Um, there is no good way to say it, but both our positivity rate and our case rates are still rising. We see a similar phenomenon in San Bernardino County, so we do not believe this is a local artifact of our own numbers. Our adjusted case rate, we are told by the state, is currently entering the purple tier again. And while we expect to remain in the red tier for the remainder of this week, pending the official announcement later today, if the trend continues, we are informed by the state we will face the possibility of going backwards. We need people to test and get our testing rate back above the state median as well as identify previously undiagnosed cases so that we can intervene and break that cycle of transmission. Most of all, we still need people to do what we've been asking them to do, to continue to socially distance, wear facial coverings, and please work with our contact tracers so we can find those events and settings where spread is occurring. We don't judge, we just want this to end. To talk more about our data, I'll give it to Ms. Sarwatari, Director of Public Health. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Mr. Johnson, Ms. North, Kim Sarawatari, Director of Public Health. Uh, so just to give more information on our metrics that are being released today by the state of California, our positivity rate is now sitting at 5%. Our raw case rate is 6.8 per 100,000. Our adjusted case rate, and remember this is adjusted based on the amount of testing that's being done. Our adjusted case rate is 7.6 per 100,000, so that's what's pushing us up into uh, the possibility of moving back to the purple tier. Our testing rate is 158.6 per 100,000. And our fourth quartile positivity, which uh, now the state is looking at this health equity metric, and so today was the, will be the first day that those numbers are released. And so we are looking at uh, zip codes, our most disadvantaged zip codes, in the county and looking at the positivity rate there to make sure that we are addressing the disproportionate impacts of COVID-19. And so our positivity rate in that lowest fourth quartile are, is 7%. And just to remind the board, uh, in order to move forward in tiers, that fourth, quarter, fourth quartile positivity has to also reach the requirements for the tiers to advance. So we can't just advance based on our overall county rate. It has to be the county rate plus the fourth quartile positivity. We did look at the data to try to see if we could figure out where the increases are occurring. We're not seeing any definitive increase by age, by race, ethnicity, or by area. It appears to be relatively countywide. So um, as Dr. Kaiser mentioned, I think the concern is that people are starting to um, become more 
um, lax in terms of following masking, social distancing, hand washing, and so we are seeing increased transmission. 